I say, Bones, is something on your mind? Indeed, my dear Watson. Are you aware of a certain Mr. Charles Darwin? But of course, Bones. To me, the eloquent theories of Darwin are sacrosanct. You'll find no mystery, dear. Ah, but Watson, one troublesome question remains. Why do we not find fossilized ancestors of the Cambrian fauna? To this, I can give no satisfactory answer. Precambrian deposits are quite lacking in evidence. Indeed. I must admit, that was a dilemma Mr. Darwin himself was unable to solve. Darwin's dilemma concerns the puzzle we know as the Cambrian Explosion. In Darwin's time, before the advent of molecular studies and a hundred years of considered thought on the mechanics of evolution, the fossil record was practically our only window into the geological past. Most of us would consider the fossil record to strengthen Darwin's theories. However, in On the Origin of Species, Darwin contests that his descent with modification, natural selection, is true despite the lack of support from the fossil record. The sudden appearance of mineralized fossils posed a major problem for Darwin. If species diverged and descended from ancestors, where were the ancestors of the fossils seen in the Cambrian? Watson, it is settled. We must take up this case. Whatever you wish, Bones. But where would we start? Not where, Watson, but when? The Cambrian explosion is a unique event in Earth's history that spanned around 20 million years. During this time, fossils with full body plans first appeared in the fossil record. This heavily contrasts to the Precambrian world, where the sedimentary record is essentially devoid of animal fossils, and to the Paleozoic, where animal life leaves persuasive evidence of its existence, both as body fossils and as disturbers of the sediment. The causality of diversity and disparity seen in the Cambrian explosion is a puzzling aspect of planet Earth's diversification of fauna. Disparity is defined as the morphological differences between species, i.e. the measure of the number of body plans, types or design forms, while diversity on the other hand is the number of different species present in the community. The appearance of larger animals with more complex bodies and hard parts defines the logic of the error. Articulated skeletons, differentiated appendages and the ability to manipulate objects or prey are all first seen in the Cambrian fossil beds. Two of the most prominent features of the Cambrian explosion are time-based, its abruptness and its exceptionality in the history of life. The onset of the Cambrian explosion is in the Diacaran, where there is evidence of stem group bilateral fossils. The trace fossil, T. pendum, marks the beginning of the Cambrian, but the precise length of the radiation remains an academic disagreement. The emergence of the first trilobite fossils marked the end of the radiation for some schools what others believe is extended until after the Cambrian. All major modern phyla, with the exception of the rhizone, appear in the fossil record in the early Cambrian, but there is a lack of fossils that are unambiguously assignable to the most basal stem groups of these phyla. Two questions emerge. Why do we find rich mineralized skeletal fossils beds suddenly appearing in the lower Cambrian, and where is the evidence for the ancestral development of the already diverged phyla? Well, Bones, what say you? It is a capital mistake to theorise in advance of the facts, Watson. However, the genetic data is indicating a much earlier origin than the Cambrian. But how can we identify early metazoan fossils if the basal characteristics of these metazoa cannot be recorded? We cannot! But perhaps by using biology and geology in tandem. Oh, Bones, analysing these molecular clocks is making my head spin. Sedimentary rock outcrops are used by paleontologists and geologists as valuable sources of information to infer paleo environments and biotas. Most fossils are preserved in sedimentary rocks, thus the more sedimentary outcrops and the potential for fossil preservation increases. The outcrop record is created by the cyclic actions of continental flooding which is a function of both climatic changes and tectonic activity. Over time, this is reduced by either or a combination of erosion and burial. In terms of both terrestrial and marine sedimentary rocks of Cambrian and Precambrian age, the relative abundance when compared to the Phanerozoic is quite low. 
This may be a key in the lack of full body fossils preserved before the Cambrian explosion. So, we're back, Bones, where we started. What do you make of it all? I'm not so sure, Watson. It is certainly puzzling. We have evidence of bilaterian stem groups from before the Cambrian. Molecular clock techniques certainly support this earlier development. As I say, Watson, the fossil record is incomplete. But geology is not our only tool. Indeed, genetics, phylogeny, chemistry, and more have all played a part in our understanding of animal evolution. We have enough evidence to put together a timeline and to consider several hypotheses. Yet I am still at a loss for an answer to where the fossils are. <laughs> Seems to me the great Sherlock Bones is in a jam with this one. <laughs> jam. Jam. Yes, Watson, that's it! What on earth, Bones? Preservation, that's the key. It's been staring me in the face this whole time. The stem groups, the basal animals, they could only need trace fossils, or perhaps none at all. The conditions were not suitable to preserve the organisms themselves. Well, bless my bones. You are a wonder. Paleontology, my dear Watson. Thank <laughs> you.